I remember one time I'm sitting around a fire with seven or eight hippies. We're at a pagan commune to celebrate Beltane or Impulk or some shit. Basically, where they're just there to smoke weed, eat mushrooms, and pretend that that's our religion. And as people start to pass out or wander off to fuck or do drugs they didn't bring enough of to share, I find myself in this boring-ass conversation with a bunch of holier-than-thou hippies talking about how much better they are than other people, which is, by the way, virtually the only thing I've ever heard hippies talk about other than drugs and music. And the argument that they were all circle jerking about used them as an example of how great the world could be. All them dumbass people out there in society think you need money and fancy clothes and a nice house and a car and a police department and a fire department and a bunch of elected officials to tell you what to do. But as anyone who looked around their commune could tell you, simply loving one another and working to the best of your ability is all it really takes to find true happiness. And they're my only connection to blotter acid at a decent price. So I don't bother to add how much it helps when that group is a politically, religiously homogenous, self-selected and peer selected group that can eject members on a majority vote. Or the fact that even with all those unstated advantages, almost nobody spends more than 18 months living there or that trading weed for mass produced tennis shoes doesn't really count as living off the land. But I've never quite gotten over the arrogance of those assholes deriding the very people whose hard work was the only thing ensuring that roving bands of Christian warlords didn't like periodically raid their encampments and make off with their women folk. The only reason society worked at all was because enough of the people weren't like them. And now here I am drowning in that shit. The folks in South Georgia may be on the opposite side of the political spectrum, but they share that same wanton blind spot. Right, we're, we're talking about a bunch of people who live in counties that receive five times as much state and federal spending as they pay out in taxes. And then they have the nerve to call taxes theft and build their entire personas around self-reliance. Right, they hate Middle Easterners, Jews and socialists, but they worship Jesus. They post on public forums about how censored they are. They use cell phones to say that science doesn't work. Clearly, reality has not been an impediment to conclusion for these idiots before. And that's why I'm so scared of them now. See, it could have just as easily gone the other way. The coronavirus started in China. They fucking ate China. Could have been that it was sold to them as a viral invasion from China that they all had to be super scared of. And then, you know, if that had been the case, everything would work out fine. But that's not the narrative that they were given to begin with. They were told it was an overblown hoax and they can't change their minds. Whatever narrative gets there first stays there forever. It's the only possible explanation for all the Christianity. So now they're in a position where they have to continue to believe that it's an overblown hoax no matter what happens around them. For a while, I thought it would change when the body started hitting the floor. Right. But now it occurs to me that death will not be enough. They're wedded to this now. Letting reality define their beliefs would take down everything that they are as human beings. They can't do it for this virus or they'd have to admit that sometimes your instincts aren't right. Sometimes your opinions have to change with the new data. And apparently that still scares them more than dying. See, on the 14th of March, my wife and I went into lockdown, but her dumbass family insisted we get together one last time before we did, just in case... Nothing else was there to defeat the fucking purpose. But ultimately, I agreed to have a breakfast with them, even though it was a terrible fucking idea, because I wanted a chance to impress upon them how goddamn important this shit was. And now I wish I could take that back, right? Because if my brother-in-law at this point wants to get away from where he is to admitting how serious a problem this is, not only does he have to admit that he was wrong, but he also has to admit that I was right. That he should have listened to his ivory tower, elitist, lefty, queer, loving, God-hating, girly-haired, libtard brother-in-law. I don't know what they're going to do. They're still not taking it seriously. This state is on an ostensible lockdown order, but the fucking the traffic outside my house hasn't slowed down at all. It's not like the virus isn't here either. There are more than three dozen confirmed cases in my little town. That's one person out of every 350 that has a confirmed case. 
We've had three deaths here. I mean, I know that's nothing compared to New York, but holy shit, this is an everybody knows everybody town. And something tells me our regional hospital isn't making much of a blip on the emergency ventilator distribution list. These motherfuckers are finally presented with a crisis that they can ameliorate by sitting on their fat asses and being antisocial. And even then they can't manage it. And, and you know what? If it was just my town, I wouldn't be all that worried about it. But I know that this exact town is copy pasted into every forgotten county and flyover country like a fucking lazily constructed video game. Their stupidity will kill them by their hundreds and their thousands and their hundreds of thousands. And when it's all over, they're going to look for somebody other than themselves to blame. And the scariest part of this story is that ultimately they will find someone.